Hello Flosstube, it's Lori of Mischievous Stitches. I want to welcome everyone to my channel this weekend. I'm very glad that you're here with me. This past week, I've had a finish, a big finish. I've fully finished an ornament and I'm busy making plans for the coming weeks. So if you've been watching me the past few videos, you know I've been focusing primarily on this piece. This is Blue Ribbon Designs Alphabet Zoo. Now it calls for a, a silken cranberry color. I chose to stitch it in 3363. I'm stitching this for a baby that's due to arrive in September, and I wanna get this framed and on the baby's wall. Um, so this, yesterday actually, last night, I stayed up. I was so close to a finish. I wanted to get that last square done, and I did. So let me share with you Alphabet Zoo. I've stitched this piece on 40 count platinum Zweigert linen. And I used one thread over two linen threads with DMC 3363. I love how it turned out. I'm, I'm wanting to jump, I'm chomping at the bit to get it framed and like go right now to take it to the framer. But I need to know what color, you know, my daughter is gonna want to have it framed in white or wood. I know the, the room itself is trimmed in, in a darker wood. So I'm not sure how she's gonna wanna do that. So I've gotta wait a little bit longer but it's finished, so it's ready to be framed. As soon as it's framed, it'll be ready to be hung. So the, again, this is Alphabet Zoo by Blue Ribbon Design, and I just love it. I love everything about it. It was fun naming the animals as I stitched them. There is a little bit of over one in this. There's partial stitches in this. And when I say a little bit, it's very minimal, the over one. There's also some places in there, if you've ever stitched a John Clayton design, which is the beautiful ladies in the hats, um, he'll do, to, to me, what's odd stitches, like only stitch the top half of a square. And there's a little bit of that in here. Like right here, there's, a, there's some fish bones. And when you get to the bones, the, only the top half of the square stitch, not in over one, but you're using the thread to go over two threads, but only on the top two threads a top thread, if that makes sense. So the top half of the stitch when you're doing over two. I think there's a little bit of it in other places too. Oh yeah, and the shark. The gills on the shark are stitched like that, but they're vertical where the ones in the fish are horizontal. But it gives it a great look. It's the first time I've done something like that on something other than a John Clayton and I enjoyed it. I enjoyed every stitch. This is a whip from March of 20. So this is another whip down, and I'm happy about that too. So, so far this year I've had five finishes, and three of them were whips from previous years. So what's gonna be up next? I'm gonna start a stitch along today with my friend Christine. Now I shared this with everyone last weekend, but I'm gonna show it just in case there's someone watching that hasn't seen it. And I'm not gonna to attempt to say that name, but as you can see, this is a, a pattern, a French pattern, and it is stitched in blues. We converted the um, colors to red last weekend, and I'm stitching it with these DMC colors. <laughs> and what is this? This is a Wichelt. Now Wichelt's fabrics are very, um, this is lamb's wool, that's right. I couldn't remember. See how thick, how starched that is? It's a very rigid fabric. Um, but I think that that's what's gonna, this pattern is going to need because it's gonna be finished. Let me get this back out so I can explain a little bit. Explain, not splain, but explain <laughs> a little better. As you can see right here, you can, this is the whole piece stitched. But it's then folded over, and this is the back and this is the front, so the top of the bottom. So it's gonna be folded and then laced, and so the whole piece is completely stitched. And there's, to give you an idea of why I wanted a more rigid fabric, it kind of is explaining to you here how to go about it. And of course, they've probably finger pressed the fabric and then stitched down, and you've gotta stitch those back flaps the back of the pillow together. 
So you're going to lace it and whip stitch it. And I've done it once before. I did enjoy it, but it's um, intensive, meaning you've got to be paying attention. You can't have outside distractions when you're working on it. But this will be the next one. And so this is a piece of lamb's wool, Wichelt. And these are the colors we've chosen. So there's only five colors. And we pulled out all the blues that were the call for colors and just tried to convert them to reds. And this is what we come up with. So there's three shades of red. And then I picked just Ecru where the original pattern I think calls for white or maybe it is cream. I think it's white. So that's what I'm gonna make a start on tonight. Christine and I both, we were talking about it, texting back and forth about it yesterday. And in the meantime, I'm gonna start them at the Prairie School. So um, just to kind of not to just whip this one out and, and, and focus completely on this one, I'm gonna make another start. And it'll probably be at some time today too, just to get some foundation stitches in, which it, which, in my mind are just stitches I can work off of when I get to work. So this one I can take back and forth to work. And it's gonna be the newest Prairie Schooler. When I last showed it, I, I don't like this neon color. And someone left a comment and said that that color is not quite as bright as it looks in this picture. But there's only a few stitches. It, look like, it looks like those bulbs are maybe four stitches each. So I'm going to convert them to the colors of my youth. And, and as a kid in the 70s, early 80s, I had um, the Christmas lights were blue, green, red, and I think yellow. So that's what I'm going to convert these to. And I'm just going to variate them just like they are on a string of Christmas lights. And I think that I'll like that one much more. Other than that, I love the penguins. Um, of course, I love Santa. Those are the only... That's the only issue I had with this pattern was that yellow, like a neon yellow. I didn't like it. And then I also don't want to buy a chronic that I'm probably never going to use again. So there's that. Now here's my strand of Prairie Schooler threads. Now this is from the last one I did. And I think that one was 20, was it 2020? I think it was the 2020 Santa. And I picked up these thread, um, floss tags <laughs> at Hobby Lobby two or three years ago and they're actually um, just tags you could use them at, for gifting and that kind of thing and I just used my punches and punched a hole in the top and in the center and this is just for my prairie schoolers because they repeat colors just like Blackbird Designs does so even though I think there's one additional color in this one that's not in here there is, I do have more of these tags. I'm just gonna add it and then I keep these separate. So every time I grab a Prairie School or Santa, I grab this ring of floss because it's gonna carry into each one. But that'll be coming up this week too. So next weekend I'll have a start on both of those pieces to share you some progress with. And then yesterday, I tried to film a video <laughs> for a tutorial on this. I did not like it. It's still on my phone, but I just, I, I didn't like it. <laughs> I didn't like how it was going. I'm not, I don't think I'm very good at tutorials. So a lot of people have asked in the past when I, like last year when I was doing a lot of finishing, if I would film a tutorial, I will give it a try again. I don't know when, um, but after a couple hours of doing it yesterday, it just, like I said, I just wasn't comfortable with it. It didn't, I didn't think it went over well. But this is what I was doing in the tutorial. So this is Christmas Tree Farm by Prairie Schooler. And I finished this piece last year. It was one of the small little cards by Prairie Schooler. And I wanted to finish it just similar to what they had on the pattern cover. So they actually mounted it on top of two, or actually theirs was one piece of um, felt. And what brought this to mind is when I was shopping at Stitch and Frame last weekend, I had picked up a Prairie School I wasn't sure if I had, and I was going to purchase it. And I noticed on the back they had instructions of how to do this. Now, my little, what is it, two by three card does not have the instructions of how to do it on there. But that one did. So I pulled out some of my other 
prairie schooler patterns, the larger leaflets, and lo and behold, the instructions are there. So I used their instructions and I, you know, modified them a little bit to how I do it, but this is him. So I've got two different colors of um, felt on the back and I use my pinking shears to cut them out. Um, I love how it turned out. The only thing I would change is I normally use two pieces um, of cotton batting behind my pieces when I'm mounting them. And it, and it gives it a little more lift than I want it to. So I think next time I do one, I would use just one. But overall, I'm happy with how it turned out. And I have one less whip to finish. So since I had such a good, you know, actually finishing it, it's a great feeling to have that one fully finished. I pulled out another one. It's Easter. So happy Easter to all the believers out there. And I pulled out this piece that I've shared before. And so I want to finish this one up. We were going to do a family dinner today and my daughter come down with, well, she didn't come down with COVID, a coworker come down with COVID. And so my oldest daughter, of course, is pregnant and, you know, she's had struggles with that. I don't want any complications whatsoever. So we put off Easter dinner. So it's just my husband and I here today. Um, we put ham in the freezer. That's what we typically have on Easter. But we just wanted to keep everyone safe. So I have had COVID back in January. I don't want it again. <laughs> and I definitely do, don't want my pregnant daughter to have it. So my, my other daughter, which is Chelsea, the one that was exposed to someone with it, she's fine. She's not showing any symptoms or anything like that. But I would rather be safe than sorry. Um, so we're just going to put it off for a couple weekends. And in the meantime, since I have spare time and I'm not going to be cooking most of the day, I pulled out this piece. And I know that this is a um, shepherd's bush and it's a small piece. It's not very big. I know that um, Helen D recently did a egg finishing tutorial. I did look at that and I appreciate she talked about, I think she talked about having it on a light box. I've got a light box. So I'm looking forward to working on this today. I've just got to cut out the template because it's not a normal um, elongated oval oval type egg it's a little more squat and fat so it's not something that i'm going to be able to pull off um, egg shapes from online and use that as a template um, but i'll get that done today and i'm going to use this as my backing fabric there you go so there's that i did get a few lines on jacob's pattern today i've shared this one with, one with you as well He's getting an afghan, his daughter, his daughters, his sisters have gotten one, and here's the colors he chose. Now they're way out of my normal um, palette of colors that I would choose for myself or even for the girls. Um, he's choosing his colors where they did not. That's the only difference. And I struggled with how I was gonna do it. I did wanna use the exact same stitch, which was the large foot stitch that I used with the girls. And I had a dream this past week. And in my dream, I was visiting Jacob in Montana and I saw this um, Afghan in the background laying over a chair, like we would have it if it was here in the house. So I went ahead and, and I've got a few stitches on that. So this is gonna be the width of it. So it's 150 stitches wide. And you can kind of see the, um, the stitch trying to uh, take in shape. So I've got that and I'm gonna be working on this off and on. I wanna get this one knocked out. Um, I would feel guilty because you know, I'll ride the, um, I'm terrible about putting myself on a guilt trip. <laughs> I take trips to, to the, there all the time, but I wanna make sure that this one is finished or very close to finish before I start on the baby's Afghans. And so I've been busy uh, looking online for patterns for baby. Afghans and I think I'm settling on a peach color for her first one and I and she's a girl <laughs> So I'm gonna at least do a peach one. Her room's gonna be painted in a lilac um, Lavenderish color, so I'll probably do a purple too uh, Probably just crochet all the Afghans for the baby to be honest But I did see on one of the places that I looked that there's not only just baby blankets they're, I think they call them cuddles, which is small blankets that baby can carry when they get older and they're toddling around. So 
that really appealed to me too. So that'll be in the coming weeks as well. But as far as stitching, one has been really calling out to me. Um, when I'm stitching a lot of times, especially at work, I will put YouTube on and have my earbuds in and I'm usually watching the History Channel. I love Time Team. I've seen those videos over and over, but I like to just listen to them. And so I'm listening to that or I'm listening to History or Odyssey or Parable. And those are the different channels I'll watch and they just play in my ear. And um, the, I picked out this one and started this one last year, I believe it was. But it's just really calling to me and I haven't even pulled it out to see how much I've had done. But this is, I wish I had it crammed it in there like that. This is My Big to Toe. This is Disturb Us, O Lord, or Disturb Us, Lord, and this is the prayer of St. Sir Francis Drake. Now, several of you I saw jumped out and was stitching this with me, and I'm glad that you did. I love, I would love to see someone's finished. I need to follow that hashtag and see if anyone's finished. And it's going to be a big piece. And this is all I got started. I don't even remember. I look at this piece. <laughs> I don't know why I put it down. But I just really, really love it. So I believe this is 40 count. I've taken the tag off of it. I try not to, but that's 40 count, and the piece itself is going to be, let me get my pet my glasses. Oh, let's see, on 36 count, it's 14 by 18, so it's not going to take that whole piece. And I need to actually probably see if I can do it on the short end versus the long and just restart it. I may do that instead of wasting that whole piece of fabric down the side. I did not place that very well. But it's gonna be 14 by 18, but that's on 36, and so mine is on 40. And let me share with you the colors. Here's the colors. It's a very minimal color palette, but it is definitely a Lori color palette, and I love it. So. The next whip that I tackle will be this one. So I've got two new starts, like I said, um, and I showed those with you, and then this will be the next whip that I work on. And it feels so good, so good to be knocking those whips out. So far this year, I haven't already said it. I looked today because I jotted in my journal that I finished this piece. I had finished three whips and two new starts this year, so that's great. For me, that's great. But then I was bad this morning. I, um, while I was stitching last night, I watched Michelle the Stripe Rose. So um, she's a North Georgia stitcher. She has very much the same taste as me. And when I watch her, I'm always inspired to buy something. So this morning I ordered another pattern like I need it. <laughs> but I did order another pattern. And I also ordered some of the 2022 charms so that I can place those on the ornaments that I finished this year. This week, I also watched um, some Jen Lee. I love to watch Jen Lee. I especially like her 24-hour of a cross stitch videos where she's there with her mom. I love those. I love the interaction between the two of them. Um, I always love to watch Emily of Eclectic Possessions, and I watched um, Marlene Stitching by the Lake. She's another favorite as well. So um, those ladies kept me company this week a lot while I was stitching. And then I also am really hung up on um, Call the Midwife. It is a BBC um, television show, it's a series, and I think it's on PBS here in the States. Um, and I think I'm on series number eight, and I think there's 10. 10 was just released on Netflix. So I've been watching it on Netflix, and I am just engrossed <laughs> when I'm watching it. I love the characters, it is midwives, of course, and it is set shortly after the end of World War II. Um, and it's just these ladies, they're, you know, it was prior to birth control and the first part of it anyway. And so it's just basically it's women's stories. It's, it's places and things and situations 
that I understand or have been in personally. And I cry at least every other, if not every other episode, because it really makes me feel things. It makes me feel emotions. And I think that's why I love the show so much. Some of the characters I love the most are not there anymore. I hate that in shows, but it's life. That's what life's really about. You, you go through life and there's people you really love and then they're gone or they, they move on, they move away. And um, the uh, for the most part, the show really works that, that type of life, those life circumstances in very well. But um, I'm going to hate it when it comes to, to an end, when, <laughs> when I'm to the end of those seasons. So I've been watching them for several weeks now. So if you've not watched it, Please do if you like heartfelt things, um, heart, and especially women's stories. You're going to love it. So there's that. And other than that, I think we're going to get out in the yard, or my husband wants to get out in the yard today, but I think I'm more of let me clean up in the house today. I don't, I'm not feeling getting outside. It rained yesterday, which was perfect for stitching and finishing up baby's piece. Um, but at the same time, there's things I need to get caught up on here in the house before I sit down and stitch because once I do, I'm not going to want to get up from the stitching. So for the coming week, um, when I come back next week, I hope to have some progress on my prayer school or Santa, um, um, some foundation stitches in my red piece with uh, the stitch along with my friend Christine. I hope to have that um, and should have my little egg finished up and who knows what else. I love to share. I get on here and I babble away. Um, so I hope you don't mind that. But everyone have a great week. Again, happy Easter to all the believers out there. And I'll see you next weekend. Take care. Bye-bye.